Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades. Uh, welcome to another video. So I was putting the snowblower on my uh, Cub Cadet lawnmower here and I thought, you know what, I've had a few people ask me to do a review on the machine to uh, let everybody know what I think of it and I figured now would be the time to do it. Now I've had this machine two seasons and it's been through two snowblowing and two lawn mowing seasons, although last year's snowblowing season was pretty lackluster. It had only been out twice uh, and one of those times I probably really wouldn't have needed it. But uh, at any rate, I've got two seasons on it now, and let's, uh, let's get started with a review, and I'll tell you what I think about it. All right, first and foremost, uh, with everything, you know, when you first get these machines, you talk about fit and finish and, and how was the machine when I received it. And the machine was exactly what it should have been when I received it. I had no flaws in the paint or anything like that, and I'm not disappointed at all with the fit and finish. Now, the more I had previous to this was a John Deere LT180 lawnmower, and I, I got rid of that lawnmower because the snowblower broke, uh, the worm gear auger in the middle of it broke, and they wanted $600 to repair it. And I said, I refuse to pay for those kind of prices for a snowblower lawnmower combination. So I, f I traded it off, or I actually sold it outright on Facebook Marketplace and went ahead and bought this. Now my neighbor and I, we kind of co-op this thing together, which is kind of a neat deal. Uh, we have one machine to do two yards, and it works out really well for us. But uh, something you might want to think about if you're, if you're in good with your neighbors. So what have I got here with this configuration and setup? I've got the Cub Cadet. It's an uh, LT46. You can see right there, LT46. Uh, and it's the XT1 version of the machine, the Enduro series. I've had this machine two years. I bought this from a, uh, from a box store type organization up here where I live in, in North Dakota. And overall, I'm, I'm very happy with the machine for the most part, but let's talk about the things that I'm not happy with. Uh, first and foremost, with the snowblower on, the biggest issue I've got is the fact that this gas cap is inherently hard to get to because of this handle right here for the snowblower. And no matter how you position the snowblower uh, up or down, getting a gas can to this gas cap is very, very difficult. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's a problem I have, and I actually told Cub Cadet about it. Uh, my last machine, my, my John Deere machine that I had, had a fuel tank which was located in the rear of the machine behind the seat and it was much easier to access. I understand why they put it here because it's it's less fuel lines, it's wasted space, might as well put something there. But it is, with the snowblower attachment on, it is inherently hard to get to this, to get to this gas cap to actually fill it up, especially if you're using a five gallon can. And this thing holds a crap ton of fuel. Uh, I don't know how much it is, but it's gotta be, it's gotta be the better part of three gallons uh, I never looked up the capacity on this thing, but it holds a lot of fuel. I can mow for a long time without ever filling this thing up. So it's got quite a, quite a fuel capacity to it. So yes, that, that's one big gripe I have. Uh, another kind of, a, kind of a bit of a gripe I have is this is the safety, the safety reverse feature on this thing. It's, it's kind of silly how you have to do this thing. You have to, when the key is run, when the machine is running and the key is on, uh, you have to turn the key back one position and then push this button to make it so that you can mow in reverse. You can actually have the blades engaged while you're reversing the tractor. And then if you should happen to get off the tractor for any reason, uh, you have to go through the whole cycle all over again. And I, I got to tell you, I, n I never expected to have to stand on my head and howl at the moon and and do a do all these things to get this thing to mow in reverse. That was the one thing where my LT180 was a little nicer. All I had to do was push one button, and I could reverse and mow. So that's that's a little extra on Cub Cadet's part. You really don't need that, and and I just I don't see the need for that. And as long as I'm on this side of the tractor, the other thing that I really don't like about the machine is the pedal placement. You can see here, this large pedal here, this is the, this is the go forward pedal and this is the go backwards pedal. This is a hydrostatic drive. All you have to do is push the pedals and go. This reversing pedal is in an inherently awkward place. 
it's 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 difficult to go from here to here to get to the reversing pedal. You have to make a conscious effort to do it. Uh, that was another place where my John Deere actually shined as the two pedals were right next to each other and all you had to do was side shift your foot from one side to the other to get reverse or forward. This one you got to relocate your foot to a completely different location and it's just a little awkward. It's not a barn burner but it's a little bit awkward and it's a little it's a little it's a little weird. It's a weird feeling I guess if you will. So it's it's not my favorite setup that they've got here but it is what it is. Like I said, it's not a barn burner, and actually after two seasons of use, you kind of get used to it, but when you first jump on the machine, that's something that you're going to notice is that, that that reversing pedal is kind of hard to kind of hard to find and kind of hard to get your foot placed correctly. So you can see here I've got my deck off already because I obviously have the snowblower mounted. I'm, I'm really happy with this deck. Uh, it seems to be very well constructed. Uh, it's like any other deck where it does seem to accumulate a fair bit of grass on the top of it, but I've never had a riding lawnmower that didn't do that. Uh, the one thing that I like about this deck, which is a feature on many machines now, is that it's got the uh, the high pressure or the hose connection where you can actually uh, wash off your deck. You just plug the hose into that connector there with the adapter that they supply you, uh, run the blades, and it actually does a pretty nice job of cleaning the underside of your deck. So while we're talking about the deck and the snowblower, that brings me to another thing that I really don't like about this machine. It is a pain in the butt to go from grass to snow. I mean, it is, it's toolless. You don't need tools. And once you've done it a couple of times, it's not so bad, but it is really not the most easy thing to do. You have to put two different parts on to mount the snowblower and, and maybe, uh, Maybe when the season's over, I'll do a uh, video on how to remove and take off the snowblower, but I'm not going to go through it now because it is just a royal pain in the butt to go from grass to snow back to grass again. It's, it's just not an easy process where there again, the John Deere actually shined very nicely. It was a couple of pins that you put into place and it basically locked in and it, it was really nice. Now, once the, once the snowblower unit is mounted, I actually really like it, but getting getting from one to the other, it's not an easy process. And and if you've never done it before, you, the instructions are actually very, very good on how to mount it and dismount it as far as the deck and the snowblower go. But be prepared. It's You're going to work up a little bit of a sweat, and you're going to have to do some pushing and pulling, and you're probably going to have to have some help. Now, I've done it enough times where I can get it done by myself. And, and I'm a kind of a big guy, so I don't have a problem lifting things. But this thing is this thing is not the easiest thing to install. So like I said, I bought the, uh, I bought the machine with the 22-horse Kohler. Uh, it's the 7000 Series V-Twin motor. Uh, this motor is really, really nice. I like the engine itself. It, does a, it starts good. It runs great. It's got plenty of power. And I have no complaints about the Kohler motor itself except for one and that one thing is located right there you see that yellow plastic gizmo right there that's your oil drain and it's nice that it's a toolless oil drain system I, I like that part of it but the drain itself is a pile of absolute garbage this was the this is the worst thing Kohler ever came up with it seeps all the time and it did that since day one I actually replaced it once thinking that that would fix the problem and it fixed it for a little while and then it started seeping again and then what you end up getting is if you're mowing grass you end up getting a buildup of oil and grass and dirt down here on your frame and it's just a constant seep. I absolutely despise that that oil drain system because it is just a hokey pile of crap and what it is is it's a piece of plastic and it's a plastic collar so the the premise is with that plastic with that plastic oil drain is that it's supposed to be a toolless toolless oil change and what you do is you you turn the collar and then you pull it out and it drains the oil and then you push it back in and you turn the collar and it locks it and it keeps the oil in and that's all fine and well and good except for the fact that it's plastic now these engines get really really hot it, it's just a nature of the beast there's nothing you can do about it they just get really warm and that heating and cooling and heating and cooling that plastic gets 
it gets larger and gets smaller. It, it, you know, it expands and shrinks and expands and shrinks. And there's a little O-ring in there besides that's supposed to help keep the oil in. And it just seeps all the time. And it's just an absolute pile of garbage. So safe it to say, I'm not really impressed with Kohler's oil drain system and, and, the pro, and, the, and the way that they've set that up. So there's a way to fix that. And that way looks like something like that. So if you want to watch how I did that repair or how I did that alteration, go ahead and uh, watch my next video. It'll just be a short, but it's going to be short and sweet. That's going to tell you exactly how I made that. All right, so moving on with the uh, continuing with the Kohler engine. Uh, again, this thing starts really good. It runs like a kitten, and it's got plenty of power. And one thing that Kohler actually did right, and they did it very, very well as opposed to the, the oil drain debacle, is uh, their air filter. This is actually a pretty, pretty snazzy feat of engineering. So right here on the air filter, this is the air filter uh, box right here. You've got two little tabs that just, they're, they're, you turn them, one on each side, take that cover off, and it's, this is actually even easy to do considering you can't get the hood all the way open with the snowblower, and then the air filter just pulls off, and then you can, when you replace it, you just push on the new air filter, put the new cover in. put the tabs back where they belong and you're back in business you got a new air filter so they did a really good job of engineering that and it makes it extremely easy there's no little wing nuts that you have to try and spin off or anything like that it's really easy to access it's really easy to get to that was one gripe I had about my LT 180 is you about had to take the hood off to get the air cleaner out and you don't have to do that with this one so that pretty much wraps up the engine. The other thing I like about this engine is, is when you do an oil change, you just dump in two quarts, and it's a done deal. It's all said and done. You, it's not 2.3 quarts or 2.7 quarts. It's two quarts of oil. You dump in two quarts, Bob's your uncle, it's all over. So a little tip for you, if you're going to do the snowblower attachment, and if you live in an area where there is snow, I would highly recommend it. Make sure that you go ahead right away and buy the weight kit and go ahead and buy right away the tire chains. Now I haven't put the tire chains on quite obviously, but without a weight kit and without tire chains, I am here to tell you, you are not going to be happy. And that's with any tractor, to be honest with you. It was the same thing with my deer. I've had Murray's, I've have, have had MTDs, I've had a, a Mus Husqvarna's, I've had a very wide assortment of machines. You always need to have some kind of a weight kit in the back and chains. Now let's talk about the snowblower just a little bit. How do I like this snowblower? Okay, this is a 42 inch wide snowblower and it's a three stage. And what does that mean? So three stage is, is you got your two breakup augers there and there. And those augers will move the snow to the middle and then you have this second stage of auger which actually feeds the snow into the impeller. And then the third stage is actually the impeller sending it out of the chute. Uh, it's, there's actually a very noticeable difference in the way that the three-stage system blows snow as opposed to the two-stage. And this isn't me drinking the Kool-Aid. Uh, I, I thought it was a gimmick, but it actually does a really, really good job of blowing snow. And I tell you what, I blew snow with this thing the first season. And, uh, you know, I had a couple of snows that were six, eight inches. And I was blowing snow 50, 60 feet. Now, that wasn't heavy, wet snow. That was your garden variety Christmas kind of snow. It wasn't too terribly wet. It was fairly light. It was fairly fluffy. And I was quite literally blowing snow over my garage, which was insane to me. I never in my life thought I would have been able to do that. But it did it. Uh, in turn, how does it deal with wet, heavy snow? It actually does very, very well. Now, I've seen on the reviews on the Cub Cadet website where some people weren't terribly impressed with how it handled wet, heavy snow. And I can't say that I had any kinds of concerns with that. I mean, I live in North Dakota here, and we get snow. And I blew wet, heavy snow with this thing, and it blows it just fine. You just have to have reasonable expectations. You can't blow wet, heavy snow and mash your foot down on the uh, hydrostat and go wide open and expect it to keep up because it's not going to. 
it's just not going to keep up. I mean, you have to back off the speed and give the machine time to work. So those people out there that are saying it doesn't blow wet, heavy snow, you got to have reasonable expectations on what you're expecting your snowblower to do. This thing does actually a really nice job. The only complaint I have is that it's only 42 inches wide. This this 22 horse could easily handle a 46 inch or even a 48 inch wide swat. And the problem with the 42 is it doesn't give you a whole lot of room outside of your tire track. So if you are cutting high banks, uh, you have to back pretty much straight out or you're getting stuck. So you really have to be cognizant of how you're backing out and, and not catching the snowblower on the or catching the tires on the on the sides of the snow that you just cut away. Once you get that first path cut, it's not an issue. But this 22 horse could very easily handle a larger snow thrower. And I would I wish Cub Cadet had a 46 inch or even a 44, but a 46 or a 48 inch. I'd put a full four foot snow blower on this thing, and I wouldn't have any concerns about it whatsoever. It's got more than enough power to get it done. Uh, as far as the mower is concerned, the mower deck actually mows very, very well. It cuts very well. I'm very happy with how the mower cuts. My lawn looks very nice and manicured when it's all said and done. I have no complaints about the, the deck itself. It's showing no abnormal signs of wear. Uh, I haven't had any problems with that, and it seems to be very, 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 very well built. And the, uh, the belt routing is very straightforward. It's easy to do. Very happy overall with the with the deck and how the deck cuts and how the snow uh, how the grass looks when it's all said and done. Now you can see here, and you're probably wondering. I have brackets here uh, mounted on both sides of the machine and on the back, and that is for a cab. And I did buy the cab option for this, and I actually bought it last year. And like I said, last year was a very lackluster year for snow. Uh, I only blew snow twice. Once of one of those times, I probably really wouldn't have needed to, but I thought it would be good to get the machine fired up and running. Uh, but the cab option is nice. It keeps the wind off you. It keeps the weather off you. But I will tell you, it it is hindering when you go to fill the gas tank because it's it's makes it even harder to get the gas can to the to the filler. And you also completely seal off the hood and you can't get the hood open. Now, that's, that's not just a Cub Cadet problem. That's, that's everybody. Nobody's figured out how to make a cab that you can still open the hood on your lawn tractor. Uh, the lights. I, mean, I know people are going to ask me about the lights. The lights aren't great. But you know what? They're, they're good enough to blow snow in the wintertime when it's still dark out. And I'm certainly not going to be mowing lawn in the dark, so it really just doesn't matter. Uh, but the, the lights aren't super bright, uh, but they're bright enough to get the job done. And if you're, blowing a, if you're blowing your driveway or a sidewalk like most people are going to be doing, you have street lighting and you have lighting for your house that is probably illuminating enough. And more than anything, the lights just provide, you, provide visibility of you so that nobody runs you over while you're out blowing snow. Uh, if you live in an area where you don't have a lot of yard lighting or whatever, you might want to think about upgrading the lights a little bit because the lights just aren't super bright. So kind of another neat feature about this machine that, uh, that, that's really kind of a little extra, but it, it, it's kind of a neat deal, is this thing's actually got cruise control. And, and it literally is just exactly that. It's cruise control. And what you do to operate the cruise control is you depress the, the forward pedal as as hard as you want to go and then when you get to the speed that you want to go to the brake handle right there if you push that down and then release the foot pedal it that that'll hold the foot pedal at that speed and then as soon as you hit the brake or you hit the foot pedal or you hit the reverse pedal as soon as you hit any other pedal it disengages the cruise control just like it does in your car but if you're mowing a big yard I mean, if you got a big, humongous yard, I can see where that cruise control is really handy. I actually use it when I mow my mow my lawn up at my hunting cabin, because uh, I got a I got a little better than an acre to mow up there, and it's it's just nice to have that cruise control. The other thing that I I like about the machine is that the steering is very very easy in comparison to my last machine my John Deere LT 180 this thing steers really really nice it doesn't take nearly as much effort to turn the steering wheel the seat the seat is extremely comfortable 
Uh, I know they make seats with armrests. That's a little extra. We are talking about a lawnmower here. I really, I don't have enough lawn to warrant having a seat with armrests, but the seat is very comfortable. I have plenty of leg room. Uh, you, you all know I'm a big guy. I'm six foot three, uh, 265 pounds, 270 maybe on the holidays. And I've got plenty of leg room with this machine. So as you can see, I'm sitting on the machine. I'm, I'm not uncomfortable at all. I've got plenty of room to operate the machine. Of course, the seat's all the way back. But it is very, very comfortable to sit on. So if you're a big guy, I would say the Cub Cadet mower shouldn't be a problem for you to sit on and operate on it. Uh, it just, it's a, it's a very comfortable machine to drive. The steering wheel is right there. The controls are easy to reach. The snowblower controls are very easy to actuate. The, uh, the up and down lever... It, it up and downs really, really easy. Uh, even my daughter has said, wow, it's a whole lot easier to run that machine. Uh, the chute controls for turning the chute and for tilting the chute are very, very accessible. They're very easy to get to. Uh, they're just in the way of the gas cap. Again, uh, to not to beat a dead horse. So overall, I'm very, I'm very happy with that. Uh, when I'm running the lawnmower function on it, uh, well, this is this is the the belt engagement, and that actually is for the lawnmower and the snowblower. It's very easy to get to. The thing I like the most about it is if I get into an oh crap situation and I need to shut things down quick, all I have to do is bump that handle, and it it knocks it out of out of drive, and it stops all of the turning parts. the uh, The deck adjustment is very easy to get to. It's it's right here. It goes up and down very easy when the deck is on it. Uh, right now the deck is not on it, so the weight of the deck is not offsetting the springs. And it's a little bit more difficult, but with the deck on it, it's very, very easy to operate. So all operations, controls, functions, accessibility are good. It's just a little awkward to go from here to here with the foot pedal to find the reverse. Whereas on my last machine, it was go from here to here to here. I didn't hardly have to move my foot at all. But again, like I said, after a, after a couple of seasons of use, you just know where that pedal is, and it's, it's not a big deal to find it. You just you have to get used to it. It's, it's not in a great location. Uh, the brakes on the mower are actually really good. Uh, when the emergency brake is set, you're not moving this thing. You're skidding tires, guaranteed. And if you depress the brakes while you're moving, you are going to stop. You better hang on because these brakes are going to stop you. Now, a lot of people with a hydrostatic mower oftentimes never touch their brake until it's time to start it because of the, the safety switch in it. You have to have the brake depressed to start the engine. Uh, but overall, the brakes on this thing are actually far better than they need to be. Uh, it really brakes very nicely. Uh, what more to talk about on the mower? So um, noise level. Uh, how loud is the mower? Uh, it's not the quietest mower I've ever, ever owned, and it certainly isn't the loudest mower I've ever owned. Uh, it's, not, it's not so loud that I feel like I need to have hearing protection on, and quite frankly, most of the time when I'm mowing the lawn, I have my earbuds anyway, and I'm listening to ACDC or uh, Led Zeppelin or maybe even a little bit of Simon and Garfunkel. just depends on how I feel that day. But the noise level on the machine isn't too bad. I do not have noise-canceling earphones. I have earbuds, and when I put my earbuds in, yes, I can hear the machine running, but I can hear the music better. So it's not, it's not insanely loud. My John Deere, admittedly, was a quieter machine. Uh, it, it wasn't as loud of a machine, uh, but this one is certainly not as loud as some of the others I've had. I've had MTDs. And I've had a uh, Husqvarna that was extremely loud. I was not impressed with it. Some of the older Cub Cadets, of course, were, were considerably louder. But as time goes on and technology gets better and EPA laws come into place, and yes, the EPA does manage noise pollution, if you can believe that or not, uh, this thing is actually fairly quiet. And we'll start it up here and run it for you in a little bit. Uh, so yes, as far as, as, as the noise of the machine goes, it's fairly quiet. It actually it increases the noise pretty significantly when you engage the deck when you're mowing the lawn because of the whirling, whirling blades. Actually, the whirling blades are more noticeable than the engine running. So the engine is actually fairly quiet. It's just not, it's certainly not Honda generator quiet. I mean, you are going to hear it and your neighbors are going to know you're mowing the lawn. So 
Uh, that all being said, the noise level on the machine is very acceptable. Starting the machine. All right, starting the machine is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, over here you have your throttle. Get my big leg out of the way. Over here you have your throttle. You have to either be sitting on the machine or you have to have the emergency brake engaged. And to engage the emergency brake, here's the brake pedal on the left side. You depress the brake as far as you can. You push the button down. You release the brake and then release the button and the emergency brake is set. So you have to be sitting on the machine or you have to have the emergency brake set to start it. You also cannot have the the belt drive for the attachments engaged, i.e. the mower deck or the snowblower. So that also has to be disengaged for you to start the machine. Now one thing I have noticed about this, on a cold start, the first time you're starting it up to go mow your lawn or whatever, I don't care if it's 80 degrees outside, I don't care if it's 90 degrees outside, I'm sitting in a heated garage right now, the machine is not cold, cold per se, but it's cold. I mean, it hasn't been running for a while. Every time you have to choke it. And to choke it, you have to push the throttle lever all the way up. And I don't know if you can see that, but here's your throttle lever. And this is the slow where the turtle is. You move it up to the rabbit and there's a detent there. You can, you can physically hear it. There's the detent. And then if you go beyond the detent, that's choke. You have to choke it just about every time you start it cold. I, in fact, I've honestly never started it and not needed to choke it. So you put it all the way to choke, turn the key on, and then you turn the key to start. And as soon as the engine pops off, you can back it off a of choke right away. And in fact, I back it off of choke and I drop it all the way down to below half throttle. So let's get it started. So you can hear it runs. It runs really, really well. Uh, with the microphone, it's a little deceiving. But the machine actually runs very smooth, and it's very quiet. Uh, it's not obtrusively loud. Now, again, to engage the reverse, I, I don't know if I can do it with the parking brake on, but to engage the reverse while you're mowing or snow blowing, you have to turn the key to the up and down position and then hold this button until that little yellow light comes on. Okay? That means now you can go in reverse while the attachments are engaged. And then as soon as you stand up from the machine, you can see the little yellow light goes off. You've got to go through that process again to turn that light back on. <coughs> Shut it off before I asphyxiate myself. So that, that's how you start the machine. And you have to do that every time the machine's cold. Now, once you've been running for a while and you've been mowing for a while, you obviously don't need the choke. In fact, you very seldomly, at least in my case, very need to very seldomly need to come off of idle to restart it. And that was just after running it for a few minutes. So uh, once you've been mowing with it and you've got the engine good and warm, it 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 starts right up. So at any rate, that's that's basic function on how to start it and how to operate the machine. So what do you pay for one of these machines? Well, I got to pull out my cheat sheet here because I can't remember it because I'm not that smart. Uh, so to buy the mower itself with the uh, with the mower deck, and this is the this is the XT1 LT46 with the the new models now have a 23 horse Kohler in them. Uh, you can pick that tractor up for 23.49.99 on Mowers Direct. Uh, the 42 inch uh, Three-stage snowblower. Uh, right now on the Cub Cadet website, they're selling for fourteen eighty-four ninety-nine. So you're looking at four grand. And then I also have the snow cab with it, which you can pick the snow cab up for right around a hundred or four hundred dollars. So forty-four hundred bucks. And then a weight kit. Uh, it looks like you can get the weight kit on Piz Parts uh, for one hundred and thirty-three dollars. And then I would highly recommend picking up another suitcase weight, which is about another 60 bucks. Uh, so that's that's what I have all told-ish into this machine. The prices haven't changed all that much since I bought it. Uh, and I'm very, very happy with it. It was money well spent. Now, that being said, uh, you go ahead and price out a John Deere tractor uh, with the same options. You might be able to get away a little cheaper with uh, like an MTD or a Murray. 
but I think everybody here knows what MTD, Murray, that kind of style of lawn tractor is all about. Uh, they're pretty much scrap. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't give you a plug nickel if it wasn't for the fact that the Briggs and Scrappin engines that I usually have in those things have generally been pretty good for me. Uh, the mowers themselves just aren't that great. I'm kind of glad Sears isn't much into the mower game anymore because their their stuff is junk too. At any rate, uh, Cub Cadet XT1 LT46 with the 22 horse Kohler, now 23 horse Kohler. Uh, very very happy with it. I would certainly recommend it. It's certainly worth the investment, and I don't think you'll be disappointed with it. I hope this review helped you out. As always, if you like these kinds of videos and you like this kind of content, please hit that like and subscribe button down below. Make sure you ding that notification bell so, you, uh, so you're notified of upcoming videos. And if you're wondering how I fixed the, uh, the easy drain drain valve on the Cub Cadet, Go ahead and check out my short video, which will be posted shortly after this one. And I give you pretty much a step-by-step -step on the parts that I bought and how to put it in. It's very, very simple. It's not difficult. And you will be very happy with it in the end. With that, this is Ed from Jack of All Trades. Thank you for riding along, and we will see you on the next video.